how good are you on hard courts these days? How much do you like playing on hard courts? Mm, I like it. I mean, I like it on, on every surface. But uh, I think in the second half of the season, the courts get a little bit faster usually. So it doesn't um, suit my game that well. But still, I think I'm improving. I was also improving on grass. So I, I try to play a, a very decent second half of the season for the first time, basically. You had a hell of a first half of the season last year. You played so many matches, won so many of them. Um, did you get tired last year? And are you, are you worried that you might get tired the second half of this season? I, I got very tired last season, but it was everything very unusual for me. I mean, out of nowhere, I played that many matches, that many tournaments, and I, I learned from it, I guess. I, I made a break after Wimbledon, which was very good. And What did you do? I was on holidays in Italy, so it was very nice. perfect, yeah. And well, there is no, no comparison about how I felt last year, how I feel this year, so it, it should be very fine. Did you just put your rackets down for your whole vacation? Yes, I have no problems with that. <laughs> I'm surprised because you know, we always talk about how hard you practice, how much you play, how hard you work. You can just, you can just relax? You're pretty good at relaxing? Too? Yes, I'm pretty good. I mean, I, 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 if I practice, I practice very hard. But if I have holidays, I, I, don't, I don't touch any rackets now. How much do you like the North American hardcourt swing in the summertime? It's a lot of weeks. Um, I like it. I mean, the, the here is the first time for me. And then uh, Canada is OK, and Cincinnati uh, is also OK. But then the New York is for sure one of my favorite tournaments. I, I love the city. And then it's probably maybe the best atmosphere of, of all year at the Grand Slam. So. Um, it's, it's the peak of the, of the hardcore season, obviously, and I, I really love the tournament. Is it the New York fans? Is it the, the energy of, of the city? What is it that when you say it's a different energy, a different atmosphere, what does that mean? A hundred percent. I mean, it's, it's very electric there on site, but then also in the city. I mean, it's, it's not easy to calm down, of course, but um, it's, it gives you a lot of energy as well, and I think uh, if you're there for one and a half, two weeks, I think it's, it's perfect. And um, I think already if you're not an athlete or something and you come there, you, you feel the energy of the city and you feel everything. And I think for us it's even more special as we have it double also on site then. Another young gun declares his spot in the upper echelon of the game. Dominic Team through to the round of 16. You have had some pretty good runs at the U.S. Open. You've gotten to the round of 16 a couple of times. Um, what would it take for you to have a, a great second week run in New York? It would be amazing. I mean, I have very good memories there. Last year I had to retire, unfortunately, but three years ago it was my first time into a second week of a slam, so it was sensational for me. And of course the expectations changed since then, so I wouldn't be happy with only a fourth round this year, so I try to go deep like I did in the French the last two years. How hard was it for you to retire at last year's Open? It was hard to watch. How hard was it for you to say, I, I can't finish? Um, of, of course it was hard, but I mean, I was a little bit expecting it. I knew somehow that it doesn't look good, so of course I tried. I mean, who, who wouldn't? And so I. I was preparing for it a little bit, so it was not, not that tough. So you're a lot fresher this summer going into the Open? 100%. I'm, I'm feeling great. I learned from some mistakes from the last year. So, and I'm, I'm coming in with 100%, so I hope it stays until the Open. We talk about super coaches all the time, and I consider Gunter Bresnik to be a super coach because he <laughs> so much formed your game, shaped your game. It's very unusual for a player to have a coach for so long and to trust one man. I think there is no better coach for me and there won't come a better coach for me. So it's great. I still have the feeling that I'm improving in, in every practice session with him basically and that every day I learn something new and every day I'm getting a better player with him. So there is no, no reason to change and I hope that basically this relationship stays uh, until the end of my career. It's so special. It's something that you know that that man, as you age, as you get fitter and more confident and more experienced, he can still continue to take you all the way. I love that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's why 
That's why he's so special, probably because, um, of course, I changed as a person, I changed as a player, I changed as everything. And I mean, I was yeah, 11 years old when, when, when he overtook me. So a lot of changes happen. And of course, also not, not always easy times, but um, well, we've been going through pretty much everything. And it was um, a su successful time until now. And I hope that it's getting even better in the future. <laughs> Dominic team is the champion in Rio. It's the eighth title of his young career. Finish these sentences for me. The biggest tennis story of 2017 so far is? It's the Australian Open final between Rafa and Rocha for me. Did you think that Rafa was going to win that match when he was up 3-1 in the fifth? To be honest, yes. <laughs> I was I was very sure about it actually. Yeah. So how surprised was it when you watched Roger Federer win a second major this season? About this, I wasn't surprised at all. I mean, he was before the tournament the main favorite for me, and I mean, some somehow there was nobody who could reach his level in Wimbledon, and uh, that's how he played the whole tournament. And so it was was not not a surprise in Australia, yes, but in Wimbledon, no. All right, finish this sentence. Rafa Nadal's clay court season was just... Couldn't be better. He could win Rome, but I had something against it, so <laughs> that's the only thing. But uh, no, I think he, he played the best he can play and um, uh, just amazing. Did you ever feel more in control of your skills or your game than when you played him in Rome? That was an unbelievable match. Mm -hmm. It was an unbelievable match, but I also know that I cannot play this a lot of times per year. So, but probably that's what it takes to, to beat him on clay when he's at his best. And um, I would prefer that it happened in Roland Garros, but still, it's, it's also, it was also nice in Rome. On court coaching. The women have it, obviously, on the WTA side. Now they're experimenting at the US Open qualifying that you can get coached, you know, on changeovers, whatever. Do you like this idea or not? Mm, I, I don't like it so much, no, but the thing what I would change is that you don't get a warning if you get coached from up from up there because I don't think that it it's disturbs anybody, but I want to I want to chill out and relax in the changeovers and not, not to talk about anything. 